Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So, we are still in Chapter 1, Matter. And now, we're going to focus on the subtopic of 1.1, Atoms and Molecules, Part 2 of the video. So, in this video, we're going to look into the learning objective of E, where we're going to calculate and the average atomic mass of an element given the relative abundance of isotope or a mass spectrum. For the learning objective E to D, I have covered that in the previous video, which is the 1.1 part 1. So if you haven't watched that one, please watch it now. So in this video, we're, gonna, we're only going to focus on learning objective E. So without any further ado, let us start. So mass spectrometry. So mass spectrometry is basically a technique in order for us to determine the mass per charge ratio and we're going to use the device name as the mass spectrometer. So the mass spectrometer is from the outside going to look as something as the big box here and it's going to be connected with a computer and with some other compatible device. So the use of the mass spectrometer is basically needed in order to de determine the relative atomic mass of an element which is AR, the relative molecular mass of a compound MR, and it can also be used in order to determine the type of isotopes, the abundance, and its relative atomic masses. So the abundance here means how much or how many of the molecule hit the detector and how much it existed. Okay, dalam bahasa Melayu, berapa banyakkah atom tersebut ada? Okay, and once we understood 1, 2, and 3, um, the mass spectrometer can also be used to understand the structure of a compound in an unknown sample. Okay, and as I mentioned, from the outside, the mass spectrometer looking like a very big box. However, from the inside, it will be looking something like this. So they're going to have a sample place here, they're going to have a heating coil, they're going to have a chamber as well as a magnet. So basically, um, the way that we're going to conduct their testing is we usually place a sample in this place here. For example, magnesium solid. So let's say if I'm putting my magnesium solid here, the magnesium solid going to be heated and this going to vaporize the sample. So the magnesium solid going to be changes into magnesium gas. Okay, and this magnesium gas will then be heated by an electron using an electron beam source. So the magnesium will be further converted into magnesium ion, for example, magnesium plus ion, and it will release one mole of electron. Okay, and these ions, because it have a positively charge, it can be uh, accelerated inside the ion electron ions acceleration chamber, and this is going to be deflected where it by a magnetic field. So the magnet is going to be placed at both sides of our tubing here and the mass to charge the magnesium ion going to be deflected according to its mass per charge ratio. As you know that, the magnesium will have isotopes. So they're going to have 24 magnesium isotope, 25 magnesium, as well as 26 magnesium. So as what you can see here, the magnesium isotope going to be deflected into various angles. So um, you can imagine that, for example, magnesium 26, which is much more heavier, will be deflected less and then it's going to hit the surface of the detector at certain angle. Meanwhile, the magnesium 24 will be deflected less. Okay, and the detector here will basically record how much the intensity or the abundance of each of the isotopes here. So it's going to be looking something like this. Okay, and as what you can see here, the magnesium 24 is going to have the highest abundance, which is 79%, because there's a lot of magnesium hitting the surface of the detector. Meanwhile, the magnesium 25 will have a very, very low abundance, means that the at the intensity of magnesium 25 is very very less and not much of it uh, hit the detector. Okay, so the mass spectrum are basically a pattern that representing the distribution of ions by mass or more correctly mass 
mass to charge ratio in a sample. Okay, and for matriculation level, you don't have to really worry about the process, and you will be looking at this in your higher degree, which is if you are taking chemistry in your degree level. For matriculation, it is important for you to lay out your focus on this max spectrum because this is going to be our focus of discussion and we need to be able to read, interpret and analyze the data from the mass spectrum. Okay, so let us look more on the mass spectrum. So analyzing the mass spectrum. So from the mass spectrum here, you can see that um, it consists of magnesium 24, magnesium 25 and also magnesium 26. So there are three isotopes here. And on the y axis, we have the relative abundance which is usually denoted by Q. And then on the X axis, we have the mass per charge ratio, and it can be in the unit of AMU. Okay, usually M. And the relative abundance here can be in terms of percentage or can be in terms of relative abundance. Okay, and the height of each line is proportional to the abundance. And as what you can see, the the 24 magnesium is the most abundant in comparison to 25 and 26. And as mentioned, the isotopic abundance can be in the terms of relative abundance or percentage abundance. Okay, so by understanding this, now we need to learn on how we can determine the relative atomic masses, which is AR here. So, in order to determine the average atomic masses from the mass spectrum or from the data, we need to use the formula of the average atomic mass, A average, is equal to E kimi divided by E ki, where E here, which is the epsilon here, refers to the total summation. Okay, so total summation of the relative abundance, which is Q, multiplied by the relative isotopic mass of an element divided by the total summation of the relative abundance that are present in an isotope of the element. So the average atomic mass can be in terms of can be expressed in terms of AMU or without unit, depending on the question. So let's say your average atomic mass here is in the unit of, a, of AMU. So you need to proceed with step number two if they ask for relative atomic mass where you need to compare that with 1 over 12 of the carbon 12 carbon 12 which is 12 AMU and this will cancel out the AMU unit and the AMU unit. Okay, And as mentioned, relative atomic mass has no unit. So to understand more about this, let us look into the example. So for example, number one, we have to determine the relative atomic mass of magnesium. So um, first, we need to find the average atomic mass first, where we're going to use the formula of E kimi divided by E ki. So uh, the abundance is denoted as here, where the y axis is is representing the abundance. Meanwhile, on the x-axis, is representing the isotopic mass. So, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 63 multiplied by 24 plus 8.1 times 25 plus 9.1 9.1 multiplied by 26. Okay, because this is what is meant by the total summation of the multiplication. So we multiply this, add up with 8.1 times 25 plus 9.1 multiplied by 26. Okay, divided by the total abundance. So the total abundance is 63 plus 8.1 plus 9.1. Okay, and then once we do the maths, we're going to get 24.3279 AMU because the unit of AMU is given as here. Okay, so now the question asks us to find the relative atomic mass. So in order to find the relative atomic mass, we need to compare that with 1 over 12 of the carbon 12. So we're going to proceed with step number 2, where the average mass of one atom of an element 
is given as here, which is 24.3279 AMU. And then we're going to compare that with 1 over 12 of carbon 12. Okay, so AMU and AMU can be cancelled out. And what we're going to left is 24.3279. So without any unit. So similar step as what you have learned in the previous video. Okay, and as what you can see here, the relative atomic mass of 24.3 is similar to what we have seen in the periodic table. So this method here is used to identify the average atomic masses using the mass spectrometer. Okay, now let us look into another example, which is example number two. So example number two stated that sulfur is a non-metallic element found in many minerals. So we have to calculate the relative atomic mass of the naturally occurring sulfur from the following data. So we are not given a mass spectrum, but we are given the data. So I saw top here with different masses. So here going to be M and the abundance here going to be Q. And in this case, they give us in terms of percentage. And that's what you can see here, the total percentage 95 plus 0 0.76 plus 4.24 will equal to 100%. Okay, because it didn't because it is in percentage. Okay, and for us to find the relative, first we need to find the average atomic mass first. So we can use ikimi divided by iki ikimi iki. Okay, so similarly as before, uh, we can multiply the abundance of ninety five times thirty two plus zero point seven six multiplied by thirty three plus 4.24 times 34. Okay, and then we're going to divide that and add up the total abundance, which is 95 plus 0 0.76 plus 4.24. So the total here is supposed to be 100. So you can put 100 straight away or you can put it like this, doesn't matter. Okay, once we do the math, we're going to get 32.1 AMU. So they have, they carry a unit of AMU here. And now, the question asks us to find the relative. So we need to proceed with the next step, which is step number two. So for the step number two, we need to compare the average atomic mass with the 1 over 12 of the carbon 12. So we're going to do that again here, which is 1 over 12 times 12. Uh, we know that we can get 1 AMU. So AMU and AMU are going to be cancelled out. And lastly, we're going to get 32.1 without any unit. Okay, as simple as that. Now, we're going to proceed to another question, different style. So, for question number three, the ratio of the relative abundance, okay, so they're given a ratio of abundance of uh, naturally occurring chlorine to be given as like this, 35 Cl over 37 Cl is equal to 3.127. So, this is the ratio. So based on the carbon-12 scale, the relative atomic mass of 35Cl is 34.9689 and 37Cl is 36.9659. So they ask us to calculate the average atomic mass of chlorine. Average atomic mass of chlorine. Okay, so for finding average atomic mass of chlorine, we're going to use ikimi divided by iki. Okay, but we are not really sure about the Q. Okay, so in order to get our Q here, we need to look at the ratio. So from the ratio given, which is 35Cl over 37Cl, it says that the ratio is 3.127. So we can also say that it is 3.127 divided by 1. So the Q for 35Cl is equal to 3.127. Meanwhile, the Q for 37Cl is equal to 1. Okay. Now we can find our average atomic mass. So 3.127 3.127, we're going to multiply that with the 34.9689 plus 1 times 36.9559 divided by the total number of abundance. So 3.127 plus 1. 
okay and then once we do the math we we're gonna get 35.45 but we don't have any unit here we don't have the any unit why why don't we have any unit okay kenapa kita tak ada unit so this is because as what you can see here there's no amu and here there's also no mm amu Okay, because they already given us the relative. So when they already given us, us the relative, we don't have any unit. And as a result, we don't have any unit. So we don't have to proceed with step number two. We can straight away to use um, um, the formula of iki mi iki in order to find the relative because they already given us the relative atomic mass at the beginning. Okay. Now we're going to proceed with example four. So for example, for the relative isotopic mass of the 6Li and 7Li are to be 6.1 and 7.02. So the isotopic mass is given our Mi here. Now, what is the percentage abundance of each isotope if the relative atomic mass is 6.94? Okay. So you know that the relative atomic mass is 6.94. Okay, the AR here, or the average lah, okay? So we need to find the percentage abundance. So we need to find Q for 6Li, and then we need to find Q for 7Li. How can we find Q? Okay, so we have to look at the formula again in order to get idea. So you know that average atomic mass is 6.94. Okay, Mi we already gotten here, which is 6.01 and 7.02, but we don't have any clue for Qi. So basically, the idea comes from here, percentage abundance. So what we can do is to make an assumption. So we can make an assumption that, assume that the percentage abundance Q of Li going to be X percent. So the difference uh, the difference of the 7Li going to be 100 minus X because you know that let's say if this one is 10% the other one going to be 90% in order to get a total of 100% so that is why 6Li I assume it to be X the 7Li going to be 100 minus X okay so now we got our Q for 6Li going to be X our 7Li going to be 100 minus X. So we can use the Iki mi over Iki. So average atomic mass is 6.94 without unit because they already given us the relative. And then we can multiply abundance multiplied by the mass plus 100 minus X multiplied by 7.02. Okay, and this need to be divided by the total abundance. So x plus 100 minus x. Okay, so we need to expand the numerator. So when we expand the numerator, we're going to get 6.01x plus 702 minus 7.12x divided by 100 because x and x here can be cancelled out. Okay, so we're going to bring that to the other side and 702 is going to bring to the left hand side as well. So, what you're going to get is 694 minus 702 and on this side here, we're going to get negative 1.01x. So, negative and negative cancel out and then therefore, you can get 8 is equal to 1.01x. So, our x here equal to 7.92%. Okay, so you do not, left your, do not leave your answer like this. But please make a conclusion here. So you know that X refers to the percentage abundance of 6Li. So you can say that percentage abundance of 6Li is equal to 7.92%. Meanwhile, the percentage abundance of 7Li is equal to 100 minus X, where our X here refers to 7.29. Therefore, our percentage abundance is going to be for 7Li is going to be 92.08%. Okay, and if you add up both together, it's going to become 100%. So you know that you are uh, roughly correct there. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!